As it turns out, controversy doesn't always sell. I'll get you a Bud Light. Advertising, when done right, can lead a company to take a huge chunk of the market. But if done wrong, it can have the opposite effect. In a noisy world where everyone is trying to get attention, sometimes it's very possible to go too far to get your message across. And these ads did just that. These are 10 controversial banned commercials. Number one is Hyundai Pipe Job. In April of 2013, advertising agency In Ocean Worldwide aired a 60 second spot in the United Kingdom on behalf of Hyundai for the new environmentally friendly iX35, which had 100% water emissions. But the spot was aired on television without Hyundai's permission for just one day in late April in an effort to gather feedback from viewers. And oh boy, did they ever get feedback! What they got was a massive outpouring of hate from viewers who were deeply disturbed and upset by the ad's subject matter. The ad used a man's attempted suicide via running his exhaust into a sealed car as a way to communicate that the emissions were safe to breathe. Death, that makes me wanna buy a car. After slowly accepting his fate, he falls asleep, only to wake up at night having spent most of the day in his car and shows him sadly walking out of his garage into his house. The horribly insensitive nature of this ad cost the agency big money to have it aired and then badly damaged Hyundai's reputation anyways. Here's an idea, don't use death when trying to sell a car. Problem solved. Number two is Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings. Yes, but Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> wings? Why on earth would you need wings on a ship? <laughs> In September of 2013, Red Bull ran a cartoon clip that featured ship crewmen loading a large crate of Red Bull onto the Titanic. This can only end badly. The ship's captain then appears to demand that he stop loading the crate because they only drink champagne on the ship. That's when the crewman explains that Red Bull gives you wings, but the captain dismisses this and replies, why on earth would you need wings on a ship? Viewers of this ad in the United Kingdom were rightly offended by the ad's attempt to make light of the 1912 disaster that killed more than 1,500 people. But it got worse because the Titanic Heritage Trust, along with family members of Titanic survivors, also called for its ban. Ultimately, the British Advertising Standards Authority decided not to investigate, but justice against the brand did come later. In October of 2014, Red Bull settled a lawsuit against them for falsely advertising that their energy drink would give you wings and agreed to pay nearly 15 million dollars. Honestly, I don't agree with what they did with this ad, but if you're stupid enough to think that an energy drink will actually give you wings, you've got some problems. Number three is Wrigley's Dog Breath. In March of 2003, Wrigley's decided to cancel the airing of their crazy 40 second commercial for the new Excite brand of gum. This is because the ad shows a seemingly hungover man wake up and proceed to vomit an entire dog, complete with impossible mouth stretching CGI and a disgusting wet dog shaking off saliva. Well, I'm gonna go buy a pack right now. After the angry dog slides out of his mouth, he dumps a few of the mint flavored pieces of gum into his mouth before his girlfriend comes downstairs to kiss him goodbye. In the ad's original airing time slot, it frightened and nauseated any children unlucky enough to catch it during their favorite shows. Timing, people, it's all about timing. Even after moving it to a post 9 p.m. time slot to avoid the young kids, Wrigley's ultimately decided that there was just no saving it. At the time, it set British records for the number of complaints that the ITC received. Wet dog and barf, not how you sell gum. Number four is Mountain Dew, Felicia the Goat, part three. And we got them all lined up. Nail this little sucker. Come on, which one is he? Point to him. Uh, it's me. On March 20th, 2013, Mountain Dew released their first commercial as part of a trilogy that they had created in collaboration with the controversial rapper and music video director Tyler the Creator. The ad series, titled Felicia the Goat, 
featured an aggressive talking goat that was voiced by Tyler. In the ads, Felicia is seen assaulting a waitress at a restaurant, then escaping from the police and finally standing in a police lineup with several black men where he threatens the injured waitress as she struggles with her decision to point him out. You throw it with me? Mm -hmm. The last commercial was released on April 24th, 2013, and a week later on May 1st, an article by Dr. Boyce Watkins slamming the ad for being racist and misogynistic went viral and started a media frenzy. Mountain Dew ended up apologizing for the ad and canceled it for obvious reasons. Interestingly enough though, Tyler the Creator was not sorry and he said if it was up to him, he would have left the piece up. Number five is McDonald's Signs. After hitting some less than desirable sales numbers in the United States, McDonald's attempted to grab some good old fashioned brownie points with Americans with their signs commercial. The ad, which aired on January 11th, 2015, during the 72nd Golden Globe Awards ceremony, featured a series of photographs of McDonald's sign marquees with various congratulatory and respectful messages displayed on them. But it wasn't really what you think. These messages referenced things like the Boston Marathon bombing, 9-11, the trapped Chilean miners, as well as birthdays and a birth announcement, just to name some. All of this was done to portray the brand's closeness to American communities, kind of like they're one of the family. However, it came off about as well as showing up to to a random family dinner uninvited. Golden Globes viewers took to social media to complain that the ad was just tasteless and shameless and the ad was, of course, pulled immediately. Everybody's always offended about everything. I mean, this might not have been in the best taste, but give me McNuggets any day, baby. They tasty. Number six is AshleyMadison.com looking for someone other than my wife. I'm looking for someone other than my wife. Other than my wife. In 2015, AshleyMadison.com, a popular online dating service geared towards already married individuals seeking secret relationships, aired a 30 second commercial with a catchy little jingle about men wanting to cheat on their wives. The ad happily depicts a man singing, I'm looking for someone other than my wife, Ashley Madison is right. This while another man strums his iPad and looks through different women on the site. For obvious reasons, this commercial got a lot of complaints complaints from offended viewers who really weren't too impressed with the message, nor the sexism of the ad's solely male targeted audience. The ad ended up being banned in Australia after 138 complaints were issued to the Australian Advertising Standards Bureau. But in a twist of karma, AshleyMadison.com was breached by hackers that leaked all of its users personal data in July of the same year. Karma is a thing of beauty. Number seven is Kyobi Laundry Detergent. And change starts with Kyobi. Kyobi, a laundry detergent brand in China, aired a 50 second spot in April of 2016 depicting a black man being washed and turned into a pale white Asian man. Yep, nothing offensive about that. The racist commercial caused huge amounts of backlash on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook and was also slammed by various American news media outlets. The commercial starts like this, with an attractive Chinese woman doing laundry who is then approached by a black painter who is covered in paintbrush marks. The man then attempts to seduce her only to have a detergent packet placed in his mouth by the woman who then forces him into the washing machine. Once the washing cycle is complete, he emerges as a clean white Chinese man to her immediate delight. With its blatant depiction of the African race as dirty, Kyobi responded to the criticism by pulling the ad and apologizing for it and any offense it might have caused. Does does the company not discuss these ads before putting them out or do they just like verbal diarrhea but put it out okay see what happens number eight is Snickers kiss
On February 4th, 2007, during the Super Bowl, Snickers decided to air a 60 second spot depicting two mechanics who kiss and then immediately question their manliness. In the ad, one of the two mechanics leans over the open hood of a car, opens a Snickers bar and starts to eat it, while the other mechanic starts eating the other end and their lips meet in the middle. The ending showed them trying to regain their dignity by doing something macho, which happened to be tearing out their chest hair and screaming. Not only was this ad stupid and ridiculous, but it was also really offensive to the LGBT community who claimed that the ad made Snickers appear to be homophobic. It was such a failure that it was pulled from TV and websites, and in 2011, readers of Ad Age voted this as the second worst Super Bowl commercial ever. The brand tried to explain that it was all in good fun, but nobody was buying it or probably Snickers for a while for that matter. Number nine is Booking.com Booking Right. You got it right. You got it Booking Right. Because it doesn't get any better than this. Booking.com's commercial completed the amazing feat of angering tons of parents and securing 2,345 complaints to the Advertising Standards Authority. They did this in early 2015 by replacing blatantly intended vulgar swear words with the word booking. In the 60 second spot, several Booking.com customers are seen arriving at their vacation hotel resorts to find that they had chosen well. But then the ad's narrator exclaims that they got it booking right. The substitution for swearing continues in lines like, look at that booking view and this is exactly what we booking needed. Now this ad is actually quite funny and it might have been appreciated a bit more if it hadn't been scheduled to air in cinemas before kids movies like Night at the Museum and Paddington. It also aired on television during Harry Potter movies and other family programs which just really angered parents. Damn, that was a booking good idea, but that was booking stupid. And number 10 is Groupon Tibet. The people of Tibet are in trouble. Their very culture is in jeopardy. But they still whip up an amazing fish curry. On February 6, 2011, e-commerce marketplace Groupon.com aired a 30-second commercial during the Super Bowl, which cost them $3 million. The ad featured actor Timothy Hutton speaking about mountainous Tibet, one of the most beautiful places in the world, and how the people of Tibet are in trouble because their culture is in jeopardy. But after this engaging moment, the commercial suddenly switches to him sitting in a Tibetan restaurant in Chicago as his fish curry that he got for half price on Groupon is being served to him. The sudden tonal shift from Tibetan problems are what's really important to whatever you can get food for cheap on our site was not appreciated by the 111 million viewers, many of whom felt the ad was insensitive and insulting to Tibetan refugees. After waves of backlash from offended social media users, Groupon issued a formal apology and pulled the commercial. Speaking of Groupon, do people even use that anymore? I mean, I like half price sushi just as much as everyone else, but feel like it got old. I want to give a big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. They have an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original shows, and more for nearly all devices like iPhones, Androids, iPads, and tablets, etc. Audiobooks are the perfect way to pass the time, especially when you're doing something time consuming like traveling or just doing chores around the house. And Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial to give you a chance to try out their service if you use the link in the description. Description. Lately, I've been listening to Superwoman's book, How to Be a Baus, one of the many motivation and inspiration audiobooks that they have. And you can get that book or any other audiobook free along with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash Matthew. So go to audible.com slash Matthew now and check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode. And if you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll have a brand new video for you tomorrow at 12 West Coast time, 3 Eastern Standard time, so make sure you come by then. Have a great day.